Hi guys. In the previous video we saw how to use the use state reactor to create a form with multiple text boxes. In this video we'll expand the form to include radio buttons and check boxes. So on screen we have the code we wrote for the previous video. To begin with let's make a change to the input component. So currently if I initialize the state object you can see that this is reflected in the paragraphs here where we're mapping out the state object into paragraphs. However, the input which updates the state pops in question is unchanged. So the reason behind this is that the inputs are currently uncontrolled components. What that means is the inputs maintain their own state and is updated based on user input. The state does not come from the state property that it sets in use state. So what we do is make this react state a single source of, source of truth so the input takes its state from a react state. So to do that, we have to pass in the value property. And then here, form.name. Wait, form height. So now if we refresh the page, you can see because we've initialized the name to Paul, Paul is displayed on the initial render for the name input. Right, and we'll just test out weight and height as well. So let's do so six kilograms. Height 170 centimeters. And you can see here this these inputs display the initial state as well. So let's just get rid of that. Right, and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a radio com component. So to keep this component simple, we're going to use a sim. We're going to use the ID property um, as the value of the input as well. So, I'm just going to copy and paste this from uh, something I did earlier, Blue Peter style. Um, so similar to the input component above, um, but with explicitly setting the type to radio, and as I mentioned before, ID. The ID prop is um, used for the um, ID attribute of the input and it's also used as the value of the in input. And this is so just to save us time when, you, when it, we, we are initializing the radio button. So the important thing about radio components are they're grouped based on the name attribute of the input. So we will have one state property for a given set of radio buttons. When a radio is checked, we want to update the state so that the value of the checked radio is set. Um, and to make this component a controlled input, we have to set the check state based on if the value of the state property for the set of radio buttons matches the current radio button's value. So you can see here, in this radio component, we're passing in the form, the whole form um, state object. And then what we're saying is, we're gonna find the, um, the state property and then the radio is checked if the ID is um, is the same as what is in the um, in the state object. Now that's because, as I said before, we're using the ID as the value of the input. So now what we're going to do is just going to initialize a couple of radio buttons. Called this I like to eat. I'm going to do radio form form name. Let's call it food and label salad ID.
and then let's create a couple more of these two more to be to be precise and let's call this one steak and let's call the next one salad with steak Next thing we're going to do is just add this name property food to the state object. So let's set that to nothing at the start. So none of the checkboxes would be checked because the empty string does not match any of the values of these radio buttons. Okay, so let's just do a quick little check. So you can see food is displayed here where we're doing our preview of the state object. And if I could check something, salad, you can see it's displayed. And then steak as well, and salad with steak. Right, so let's move on to checkboxes. So again, I'm just gonna paste in an example which I created before. So checkboxes are different from radio buttons as they can have can be used on their own and each checkbox will have its own key in the state object which will say if the checkbox has been checked or not. So to keep this component simple we uh, this component um, the ID of the checkbox is used as the name attribute as well as the value of the checkbox. So value here is not very important for checkboxes as what we really care about is if the checkbox is uh, checked or not, if it's on or off. So I'm just going to create a few instances of that. see here I like the following football hockey and I'm just gonna add these properties football and hockey to the state object I'm gonna initialize these to false so it's not checked at the start All right so now if I click on one of these well first things first let's we need to change this so it explicitly sets the value to string so we can display the output. So currently it's false. And then if I click on one of these. So you can see here something's gone wrong because what's happening is we're not setting the check state, we're actually setting the value. And the reason behind that is we need to change the handle change um, method so it handles checkboxes a little differently because what we don't care about is we don't care about the value we care about the check state so what we're going to do is off the event target object we're just going to get off the type so we know the type of input we're dealing with and we're going to get the check state and then what we're going to do so we're going to just do a ternary operator and check if the type is checkbox and if it is we're going to pass the check state as the value rather than the value itself and now if you click on hockey football sorry you can see it changes to true click it again you can see it changes to false Right, and there you have it. So, in this video we've just created a radio button and also a checkbox component. And in the following videos, we're gonna be adding other form controls. So we're gonna be looking at text areas and selects. Thank you for watching.